Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. The past four weeks of gospel readings from John have made the persistent claim that Jesus is the bread of life. It is a metaphor, of course, a vehicle that proclaims Jesus' promise for eternal life through him. The bread of life is a metaphor intended to remind us to receive Christ, to live in him, with him, and by his ways. I have heard people, friends, many people claim that they don't like or that they don't understand the Gospel of John. And that is partly because the writing style of John differs significantly from the other three Gospels. The writer's language is rich sometimes with irony or with paradox and with lots of symbols. It can also be a confusing Gospel. For example, we have heard for the fifth week in a row now, Jesus is claimed to be the bread of life, right? Even in the opening line of today's gospel, Jesus stated that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood abide in him and he in them. Okay, so why is it then that seven verses later in today's lesson, Jesus says in the gospel of John, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh? Useless. Okay, you've been spending five weeks talking about the flesh and the blood, and today, useless. It is the spirit that gives life. Jesus, Jesus didn't make that statement in any other gospel but John. John the Evangelist continues to keep people of faith, I would say, on our spiritual toes and aware of our human limitations. Understanding the breath of God is impossible. Understanding all that Christ is, was, and will be a challenge. We heard in the lesson that Christ's invitation to, to eat his flesh and to drink his blood actually turned some people away. I wonder whether the flesh and blood metaphor was Christ's way of weeding out those who wouldn't make the commitment to the Lord or to their own faith. Perhaps his words were a way of weeding out sensationalists, you know, those folks who only sought, were looking for that spiritual high, that spiritual rush, but nothing more. Stay on the surface, on the superficial, but don't go, didn't go deep enough. I don't know. Jesus said it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. Perhaps because he knew that he would not be present forever. Today's lesson forewarns the listeners that Jesus knew he would be betrayed by one of his disciples, leading to his crucifixion. Well, it took faith to follow Jesus when he was alive. How much more would it take to believe and have faith after his death and resurrection? We the faithful know the answer to that because life always tugs at our trust always tugs at our belief and faith in Christ, yet here we are. Thanks be to God. The challenges, they're there. The ups and downs, they're there. But here we are, praising, worshiping with Christ and in Him. What we're invited to hold on to and to increase in our spiritual journeys is faith. Faith is what holds us together. Believing with heart, 
and mind, body and soul that Jesus is the Holy One of God. The point that John wanted to make continues to be made today by the Holy Spirit. Jesus left us the Spirit to continue having faith, knowing that we're not alone, guiding us and walking with us. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus told His disciples that if they weren't ready to be faithful believers, they should move on. Like some of the other followers did. But Simon Peter, in that great, soulful, wise way, asked Jesus, to whom should we go? I see it sort of like, you're it, man. What do you mean, move on? To whom should we go? I suppose that was Peter's way of saying that he might not have been sure how to fully believe, but he did know he did know that he had faith in Jesus. He did believe, even when he didn't fully understand why or even how to believe. But he didn't go. He stayed behind Jesus and actually, as in the kids' game, was there. He became the leader too. In today's Old Testament reading, the first lesson, the prophet Joshua also drew this line across the sand for the people of Israel to determine whether they would stay or go. Revere the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in faithfulness, or be with the gods of their, that their ancestors served. There are times when our journeys parallel the faith journeys of our spiritual ancestors. We question our belief. We question our direction, some of us. We question our faith foundations because something shakes them. What holds us together in times of doubt is prayer. Prayer with faith. After the author of the letter to the Ephesians concluded his, I call it this pièce de résistance, you know, this big claim comparing the challenges of a life of faith with the militaristic battle and God's power to armor that we wear. He urged the embattled to constantly pray. Pray in the Spirit, he said, at all times in every prayer and supplication. Pray in the Spirit at all times. Why? Because prayer builds faith and strengthens that which one can only accept by faith, that which is in us. I imagine that when Jesus asked his disciples if they wished to walk out on him or not, walk out on God, that they must have paused, taken inventory, and assess where they stood, what ground did they stand on? Did they believe that faith in Christ would give them eternal life? How could they build their faith? What was, is eternal life? You know, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the source of so many questions. And... Jesus Christ is the source of so many answers. We have so many choices in life, so many options to choose from. Jesus gave his disciples one of those options. Stay, leave. In our life, we could just go to a supermarket and look at all of those commitments hundreds of options just go down the cereal line of a supermarket. So many options, it could be overwhelming. But today's readings boil down those options to a fundamental choice. Do I walk with Jesus or not? Will I choose to go to another God? How strong 
is my faith? We all have days when we question whether we want to make the time to revere and worship the Lord or not. Coming to Christ calls us from our place of comfort into the life of sacrifice through the death and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus Christ. I invite you then to ponder in your prayers why it is that when you ask, to whom can I go? Like the disciples ask, to whom can I go? You go to Christ. Why do you do that? We may not fully understand why we have faith in Him or why we believe and trust that our Lord indeed has our backs, but somehow we know that He has chosen us and marked us as Christ's own, as His own forever, somehow. I invite you then to come forth to the altar rail today to have your faith renewed. How? By His flesh and blood. Come with your questions. Come with your faith. Come with your love. Come to be reaffirmed. At the Lord's table, all are welcome. Faith is restored and renewed. Just come. Amen.